Hi design figures, my name is Matthew Sear and today we're getting into Figma and we're going to be exploring everything you need to know about the Pixelink Variable Toolkit. Stop clicking through those endless menus, stop having to go through and then find the variables that you want to apply to your designs. Use the Pixelink Variable Toolkit and apply them directly to your designs straight from the kit. All right, so if you'd like to learn more about the Pixeling Variable Toolkit, then you're in the right place. Sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. All right, so we are going to jump up the top here inside of Figma. We're going to grab our Pixeling Variable Toolkit. We're going to open this up. It will load in our variables. We're going to have our local variables as well as our external variables if available loaded in. We'll be able to click on one of those and you can see over here I've got my local variables, I've got the groupings that I've set up and I can see those variables inside here. I can actually drag this out from the corner and can drag it back in. And what I can do is for example I've got this frame back here, I've got this, this square what I can just scroll right up the top here. I can click on some of my colors and I can fill it directly. There we go. So I've applied my fill. I can change my fill. I can apply a different outline directly to my design. Fantastic. And let's learn out how we can apply our auto layout. So I've got this frame that's around my asset. So I can click directly here and it will apply auto layout. So if it didn't have auto layout, once I click it, it will apply auto layout. It'll put the positioning and I can adjust the positioning of my auto layout. So that's how we can adjust our auto layout and that's how we can start applying our variables directly to the asset. Let's learn how we can apply our padding. So I can click my frame here and I can click another frame and I can click all of the frames if I want. I can go over to my scaling actual collection of variables and I can go down here to my padding and just click this here. This will be all and I will apply 16 padding on all of them. What I can also do is if I'd like, I can actually click a specific corner. I can change the padding by specifying the different padding in the different areas. This is how we can quickly apply our variables directly to our asset and then also adjust the actual application of our actual sizes to our asset quickly using the padding application panel. Now let's say we want to do rounding. We want to achieve a rounding similar to what we have here. We have those corners, they're nicely rounded. We also have the rest. So first we can just select all of our assets. We can go back and I actually have a specific variable collection called rounding. And what I can do is I can actually just scroll to the rounding panel here. Let's set them all to eight. Now I can see that they're all set to eight and they have their rounding applied here. But in any scenario, if I wanted to select them all and maybe I just want, let's say, the top corner, I can click that top corner and I can change those corners. And this is how I can quickly apply that actual sizing directly to my asset without having to fiddle around going through those endless drop downs. So that's how we could apply rounding using the variable toolkit we might want to actually be able to adjust and actually apply our outline. So because I have our outline panel down the bottom here and go back to that scaling and I can apply and I can adjust this value. So at the moment it's on a 32, but I can click here and maybe I want it to be on a 20 or I want it to be on a two. Maybe I want one on the other side and that's where I can chuck the other side as well. So that's how can we can quickly apply basically our outline number variables to our asset. We can select all, we can apply all, maybe, maybe I want to take that one to zero. Quick application of our outline numbers to our actual frames. This is how we can start to apply our max and min boundaries to our asset. 
You can see over here, I can push and stretch and squash this. It already has a, some max and mins applied, which is fantastic. So what I can do is I can go down and I can click on my value and I can actually apply that new actual maximum value. And you will see that it will remove and it will adjust the variables that are applied here, which means that you're not spending that time going in here, clicking in here, clicking here, and then also finding the right value. You can directly apply it straight from the kit down here, right to your asset. So you can have a lot more time spending designing and less time clicking through those endless menus. You can control for the left and right uh, maximum as well as the top and bottom. You can control for the minimum as well from left to right and all and top to bottom. All right, now what we can do is we're gonna actually get into what we can play around with modes. So inside the variable toolkit, it actually has the ability to switch between different modes. So let me click on my text on my asset and I can actually just apply my colors. So I'm just gonna quickly apply these colors to this text block. Of course, at the moment, it's on an actual dark background, but the best part is I can go over and I can go to where my colors are and I can actually switch it to dark mode and means that I can preview it in dark mode. If I actually click off of my asset, it will go back to what it was by default, unless I want to make it fixed. So I can click it again. I'm still on dark mode, so it changes to dark mode. I can set it to fixed. So, and there we go. Now it remains fixed. I can actually just take that off, but I'll keep it on, let's say dark mode. And let's actually create a frame. I'm going to go down to that somatic collection. And what I can do is I can actually go and scroll down here. Let's grab ourselves a container and let's apply the color, the outline. Let's go over and get back to our rounding. Let's apply a 24 rounding to the actual frame. I can grab this, I can chuck it in here. I can click on my frame. I'm gonna go back to my color. Just make sure that it stays on dark mode so this can be fixed. And I don't have any padding at the moment. I can go up the top here. I can set it to auto layer and I can get it to hug the content. And what I can do is just go to that scaling size and then I can just go down and find my padding and I can apply 24 padding. There we go. So that's how quick it is to just quickly apply all of your variables directly to your asset. And now with all of those variables applied, I can actually change it from my light and dark mode. Let's say I grab this and I set that back to being auto again. You can see that the card can be in light, it could be in dark. And also I got all of the other actual variables that have come along with it. There's my scaling, so I can adjust it to the desktop. I can adjust it to the mobile. If I wanted to, let's say, create a button, let's grab ourselves a frame. Let's call this one button. And let's grab ourselves some text. And I will just call this also button. And I can just make it hug the text. I can because the text already has the variable on it, which is fantastic, I can just leave it as so. I can get it to hug the actual button itself and I can go down to padding and I can actually apply specific padding on either side. So let's say we're gonna go 16 by 16 and let's add ourselves at the top. Let's add the eight and let's add another eight. And there we go. And I can go down here and I can go to my rounding and I can scroll down and I can apply, for example, a six rounding. Now I have not applied my colors just of yet, but what I can do is go back to that actual somatic collection. Let's go to say this main purple one. I can fill it in there, add the outline. And you can see that I have a primary, secondary and tertiary. I'm going to apply the text color as the primary. 
which means that I can grab this text, I have this button, I can actually throw it into my content, I can change the stacking order, I can drag that text up, let's scale that up, and there we go. I can add in that gap, so let's go to our gap and add in that gap size as well. Go to scaling, I can go to eight, maybe I want more, let's add a little more, there we go. The best part is this asset has all of the modes applied to it. I can switch between those different desktop modes. I can also check it out in light mode and in dark mode. I can set and fix those modes. And let's say even for the button itself, uh, as we have in that somatic collection, I have the enabled state, which is just that one. I have that different hovered states, the disabled state, and they're directly accessible and visible in the kit. And I can also just fix any of those states directly to the asset if I want. This is how you can quickly and easily create content with the pixeling variable toolkit. And now you have all of your variables and you're using them to the best of their abilities and what they can do. Thank you design thinkers for watching the video and I hope the variable toolkit helps speed up your process with applying variables. Please let us know in the comment section below what would you like to see next in the Pixelink variable toolkit. And please also subscribe and like the video if you're enjoying the content so far. And until next time design thinkers keep thinking and keep creating and keep building amazing things. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.